Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to help us go over the top DFS plays for tonight in the NBA. What's happening, Tom? I'm doing good. We have a four-game slate, and it seems pretty clear and pretty straightforward. We have a lot of good options across the board. It's nice when it's this easy, theoretically, this straight up. But of course, things don't always go as it seems. So tonight, let's try to break it down for everybody watching so they can win some money on FanDuel tonight. Let's start out with some of your top studs on the board. We begin with Washington's Bradley Beal. High price tonight, but well worth it, you say. Yeah, we have this game coming in with a 230-point over-under. It's by far the highest on the slate. And, you know, we get, you know, we look at, you know, Joel Embiid tonight. And that game's down at 206, which really puts you in a tough spot. Who do you want to spend up for? And for me, it's Bradley Beal tonight. It is a pace down spot against the Hornets, but they're not going to be dropping all the way down. The Wizards right now are up at fifth fastest. The Hornets are down at 27th. We'll see them meet somewhere in the middle. But Bradley Beal is that guy in Washington. He's averaging over 21 field goal attempts per game, over seven and a half three-pointers per game. His 34% usage rate is amazing, 1.18 FanDuel points per minute. Charlotte's around middle of the league when it comes to FanDuel points allowed per game to shooting guards. But ultimately, we're going to be seeing you know, a, a generally good defensive matchup. The usage will always be there for Bradley Beal. And he could do this in a losing effort, you know, 40 real points, 55 FanDuel points, exceeding 5x value. And he's cheaper than Joel Embiid in a better game environment. So for me, it's all about Bradley Beal tonight. High scoring game, high total. Bradley Beal, the star for the Washington Wizards. You know how great his usage is. He's the guy you got to lock in your lineups tonight, despite the high price tag. Jimmy Butler has the heat rolling right along in the Eastern Conference. He's obviously worth going with on tonight's slate. Why do you like Jimmy Butler despite his high price tag? Yeah, tonight's slate, I, I think, you know, spending up for three players in the $9,000 range is the way I want to go about things. And, you know, Jimmy Butler, you know, looking like his old self, I want to say back to, you know, the Chicago days, Jimmy Minutes, where he is playing an unbelievable amount of minutes, 35 minutes or more in five straight games. We all know that minutes equals money in NBA DFS. And, you know, we look at his, you know, overall usage and production with the team. A 20% usage rate is really modest, but he's producing 1.12 FanDuel points per minute. So basically every time he touches the ball, he's doing something, you know, productive with it. He spills up the statute as he always does. He has two triple doubles over his last five games. He's shooting, you know, 15-ish field goal attempts per game. He has five or more three-pointers in five of his last six Combined with the fact he gets to the line all the time with 10 or more field goals in five of his last six. Uh, it's a pace-up spot against the Hawks. They are one of the bottom teams in the league against shooting guards. We are looking at another 45- to 55-point game from both Beal and Butler tonight, which is why I want to lock both of them in. Given the small slate tonight, studs and duds make some sense. Jimmy Butler, Bradley Beal both locked into Tom's lineups tonight, so make sure that's the way you're going, both cash and tournaments. One more stone we want to mention. It's Damian Lillard for Portland facing off against the New York Knicks at home tonight. Why do you like Dame Dalla? You know, he's one of those players that I always fear not having enough exposure to just because we know his pure scoring upside is phenomenal. An insane amount of volume from the field. 15 or more field goal attempts. We're talking about six or more threes in six straight games. The Knicks... No one we have to fear defensively. It is a pace down spot for Portland. I'm not really too worried about that. But, you know, we look at Lillard, Butler, and Beal, and Beal tonight. We lock in these three players. You're left with about $5,100 per player remaining. That's doable on a four-game slate. And you're getting basically 150 points or so around there from these three players. So we want the matchup against the Knicks. We want the volume of shots from Lillard. And I'm going with these three guys at the top. All right, those studs clear on this small slate. Damian Lillard rounds them out here going up against the Knicks. You know what Lillard's usage rate is. You know how they're fast-paced. He's got to be shooting it better. Uh, he'll try to break the Blazers' skid tonight against the Knicks. Let's go over to some of the undervalued players, the sneaky guys, the not duds, but, you know, the lower-owned, lower-priced players that you have to round out your lineup with if you're going to start all these superstars. We begin in Atlanta with my man Kevin Herter back on your radar tonight. How come? He's back from his injury. Uh, you know, kind of a weird season for him. He started the year on the bench on a minutes limit. He got hurt again, missed a bunch of time, uh, but he's back. He's going to be limited to 25 minutes today, which was reported uh, a little bit earlier. He saw 23 and 15 minutes in the past two games. Uh, and I think this is kind of a, a buy low spot on him. He's only $4,400 tonight. His role should be increasing. We're going to see his minutes 
continuously bump up. And that $4,400 price tag is not going to stay there. Uh, you know, an 18% usage rate, 0.83 Fandle points per minute is modest, but he's mainly a pure score. Doesn't necessarily fill up the rest of the stat sheet. They are eight and a half point underdogs. And let's you know, this Hawks lineup is kind of lacking. Cam Reddish is not doing a whole lot. Jabari Parker is not playing super well right now. Alex Len is out. It's really Trey Young and then everyone else. So they need some scoring. And that's where Herter can come into play tonight. Kevin Herter should always be in play. The minutes need to be there for the Maryland alum. And I think tonight, given the injuries in Atlanta, he should be in a good spot to contribute both to the Hawks and to your FanDuel lineups. Another undervalued player here on tonight's sleep brings us to Jeremy Grant. What do you like about Grant and his ability uh, to go off tonight? First of all, his price is very cheap at $3,700. And more importantly, his production and his role is actually increasing. And yet his price is still, uh, you know, very cheap. You know, in the beginning of the year, Millsap, uh, their starting power forward for Denver, was seeing 30-ish minutes a game, 70-30, uh, 60-40 time split when it comes to these two players. We've actually seen Paul Millsap, uh, his minutes come down. And now he's in the mid to low 20s in a lot of these games. And Grant is basically in the same role he is. He's just being more productive. And what's best about this is, uh, Denver has basically a 5v5 swap when their starters come off the court. So their second unit is Grant, Hernan Gomez, Plumlee, Monty Morris, and Malik Beasley. And Grant is carrying uh, that unit a usage high of 24%, along with 0.96 Fando points per minute. Also combined with the fact that he shouldn't be seeing uh, too much Al Horford because Horford will be off the court, Grant and the second unit will be on against the second unit. And he's producing 18 or more Fando points in four of his last six games, playing about 20 minutes per game in all of these contests. So under 4K and still producing 20 fantasy points, sign me up. You kind of know what you're getting. From Jeremy Grant, and as Tom said, the price is under $4,000. It seems like a no-brainer. Now, he's not going to light it up by any means, but he'll still be a worthwhile play on tonight's slate where you're getting some somebody priced, as Tom mentioned, under $4,000 with stats to fill out around the board. Finally, we wrap up tonight with Troy Brown of the Wizards. Why do you like Troy Brown? We mentioned Bradley Beal before. We talked about Brown uh, as well in previous editions. Why do you like Brown tonight? Brown and the Wizards, they're dealing with a you know, ton of injuries. They still have Thomas Bryant now. Uh, Mo Wagner is back at center. Their rotation is really mixed up. And, you know, Brown should be there for a good amount of minutes tonight in a very high-scoring 230-point over-under against the Hornets. You know, uh, Isak Bonga is getting the start generally for the Wizards at small forward. But uh, Brown is playing more minutes eventually, and he's actually being more productive compared to Bonga. So I'm just going to take the guy, even though he's not the starter and slightly more expensive, I'm going to take the guy that is being more productive. He generally also plays when Beal is off the court. There's some overlap at times just because their rotation is so mixed up over the past you know, week or two. Uh, but he's taking a good amount of field goal attempts. He can fill in the rest of the stat sheet a lot. I mean, this is a guy who's a former top 15 first-round pick. The Wizards kind of got to get him involved in the offense when they can, especially when Beal is not on the court. So I'm taking a relatively soft matchup against the Hornets, high over-under game, and a guy who doesn't have to compete for usage. All right, we'll see what Troy Brown can do. And like you said, you've been liking him for a while. You know that at some point, those minutes will be there. The performance could follow. Troy Brown, a sneaky play on a slate where you need to find him, again, to get those studs in there. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. We appreciate you checking us out. Go play NBA DFS tonight. Follow Thomas Picks. And then join us tomorrow where Jim Sonis will join me as we look toward DFS for NFL Week Number 15. Have a great night. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you back here tomorrow.